there are people who believe that you must come here to wallow in misery if you are miserable. Only by people, I mean me. And the tree isn't really called anything. So, if you're miserable, you talk to a tree about it? No, what? You can't talk to trees. What do you think, I am crazy? No, I didn't mean like that. Or maybe you talk to trees. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that you were crazy. Even though you probably are if you talk to trees. I wouldn't recommend it in either case. People will think you are a weird person. No, I just forget it. She looks mildly confused, for which I don't blame her at all. She tilts her head a little to the side, expression melting back to her usual one. Alright, I'm good at forgetting things. So why are we here? Are you miserable then? I can't read the expression she makes. I hate how bad I am at interpreting Rin's mood. She doesn't answer right away, as if she herself isn't quite certain of her own mood. The blank stare changes into a more difficult expression as she shuffles her way around. Finally, coming to a conclusion, Rin shrugs her shoulders. I've grown to seriously dislike that gesture. It doesn't mean anything. Maybe. I just feel kind of like I'm sinking underwater. I don't know what I should do. I don't know where I should go. That's all. Maybe it's not a big deal, but I thought walking might help. Kind of like if I go somewhere, I would know where I should go. I don't really know if I if it did. It really would have made sense if walking had helped to decide where to go. So you don't want to try to get an exhibition, or rather, you you don't know if you do. Can't decide. Rin doesn't say anything for a while, arranging her thoughts in silence. The quiet is broken by a bird song from somewhere in the treetops, followed by the rustle of leaves as the bird takes flight. Maybe. I'm not sure if I ha I can have a thing like that. So far, I've only painted for myself. I don't think I could have my things on display the way I am now. This me couldn't do it. Her reason sounds like a weak excuse. I make my trademark frown, by, but she doesn't notice it. I don't get it. The teacher certainly thinks you could. I don't think he'd suggest it otherwise. Sounds like he's calling in favors from his friends, too. I know, he's really done a lot for me, but this might be too much. Because becoming someone who, who can do it might be pretty hard. Maybe I can't do it at all. He can't do it for me. And if I let him try, I just sink deeper and deeper. Rin stands in front of the large maple and turns away from me. I want to close the few feet of distance between us and... I don't know. My irritation is suddenly gone and I start feeling sympathetic to her. I know exactly how you feel. Well, maybe I don't, but still... I think I haven't felt like that, uh, like I was actually in control of my own life this whole year. I'm just helplessly going along with the flow. Like coming here to the school. I didn't really choose it myself, and I certainly didn't choose this time of my life to learn I have this condition. I still can't casually say the word aloud. It's like, yeah, you know, it's exactly like being underwater. Like I can't even breathe. Rin turns to face me again, a sad expression on her face. Is that why you look so sad all the time? I don't want to look sad like you. Do I look to you like you look to me? I don't look sad all the time. I just don't know what I should be feeling. What kind of face I should be making. I mean, neither. Do I look sad now? Not really. You look like you always do, I think. But I'm sinking. I should try to float up like a ri rubber duck. Quack, quack, all yellow and creepy. I have to think for a few seconds that about which direction I should pursue in this conversation. Then I realize that it doesn't matter. You think rubber ducks are creepy? You don't? I think they look very creepy. Everything that has eyes but isn't alive is very disturbing, like rubber ducks and reflections in the mirrors. She plops down on the forest bed, leaning on a maple tree she named the Worry Tree. After wondering what to do for a minute, I sit down too, three feet apart from her. The forest envelops us in its embrace, and its stillness falls upon the two of us. We sit there without speaking for a long while. I can literally feel the time pass. 
Patches of sunlight litter the small clearing in the patterns that echo the mako maple canopies. <clears throat> One of them falls directly on me, warming me all the way to the bone. I wonder what I could do for myself and maybe for Rin. For now, I just keep watching her from this distance. Sometimes she cranes her necks all the way back so she can... So much that it looks like almost painful and stares up at the smallest patch of visible sky past the canopy of the worry tree. Sometimes she just stares blankly ahead, as if seeing something just beyond her reach. She keeps whispering to herself, but so quietly that I can't hear her, even though I'm sitting right next to her. I only see her lips moving, like she was in the middle of a distant dream. I realize that right now I am no longer... F I no longer feel any of the intense loneliness I f feel at night just be c before falling asleep. I might be more like Rin than I thought. I can either give up on and stay submerged under the weight of all the crap in my life, or try to change myself for the better. Her decision is different, yet the same. <clears throat> and unlike her, I know for sure that I can't stay like this forever. I have to change. I want to be more like Rin. Rin could probably Rin could probably do it, even though she seems to be <clears throat> to doubt herself. I have no doubts about her strength. She could do it, even if she can't. Wait. Okay. It makes me feel a little bit better, too, and I lean back against the tree, breathing out deeply as if for the first time in a long time. We stay that way in the small clearing <clears throat> until the angle of the sun changes and the chilly shadows deepen. No longer warm where we sit, we leave the forest, returning along the same path we took coming in. It doesn't seem like Rune has come to a decision. wonder if it was a bad idea for me to come along. It's alright, I don't mind. I'm sure the trees and the dirts and rocks won't mind either. Did you mind? No, not at all. I think it helped me too. While we walk back towards the dormitories, the sky is changing to a deep ultra ultramarine. The first summer stars twinkle softly from between the spots in the cam canopy, barely visible like tiny fireflies. I become very self-conscious about Rin's presence. I haven't thought much about girls since things fell apart with Iwanako. This is kind of the same situation as then. But to be honest, I don't think it really counts for much. Not with Rin. And yet, it feels good walking next to her. Even if it isn't anything more than this. At first, I think Rin agitated me quite a bit with her unpredictable behavior. But recently, I feel I haven't had to be on my toes so much. I've managed to let myself go a little. It makes me feel satisfied, even though, ultimately, I think it's more thanks to Rin than myself. She seems to be disinterested in a huge number of things, but something in her makes me try harder than I normally would. <clears throat> it's not that I want to impress her. I think this, that truly impressing Rin would take near superhuman effort just because of how she is. Instead, it becomes... It beca it's because there is this... Relentless feeling inside of me that I shouldn't let Rin down. It's really weird. I wonder why I started thinking like that. I don't even know what sort of expectations she has about pretty much anything. So, how would, could I let her down? Rin has this unassuming air around her and doesn't really talk about stuff very often. Even today's confession of her self doubt caught me a little off guard, a little bit off guard. I feel like I want to talk more with her. The realization suddenly dawns on me that Rin is basically the only person I talk to nowadays apart from whatever I have to endure from Shizune, Misha, or Kenji. I feel slightly depressed. In front of the dormitories, as if summoned by my dark thoughts, we run into Kenji himself. It feels very odd seeing him outside, breathing fresh outdoor air. At least it's already dusk. I partially expect Kenji to disintegrate upon direct exposure to the sun. Kenji himself seems very insecure as well, standing around looking like he's waiting for something, but doesn't know himself what it might be. Hey Kenji, what are you doing? Hello? Who are you? It's me, Hisao. Um, I'm not sure if you know Tezuka from Class 3-4. From his face, I can see that not only he doesn't know Rin, he also can't see her from this short distance. Oh, sup dudes? Kenji sticks his hands enthusiastically forward, almost straight into Rin's stomach. 
Rin looks at his outstretched hand in confusion until Kenshi clears his throat and retracts the hand. There's something almost cool, almost cool that he manages to do with social awkwardness. It's not like I'm the most suave eh, man on the planet, but I don't think I'll ever be able to even approach Kenji's level. I think I respect Kenji a little bit more. So, you're waiting for someone? He leans closer, lowers his voice to an agitated whisper. I see his facial muscles twitching. Come on, man, you know I can't talk about stuff here in public. They might be listening. I'm going to have to pick up some stuff from somewhere, and I don't want those snooping student council hags to get on my case. Also, I don't trust your friend. Nothing personal. Are you sure he's trustworthy? I briefly considered telling Kenji about Rin's gender, but it might end up badly for one or both of them. I decide against it. Yeah, I'm sure. He turns from me to Rin, and I immediately get the feeling that I have to prevent them from talking to each other with whatever means necessary. However, there is little I can do, now, apart from physical violence. <laughs> in that case, would you be interested in knowing about the worst threat to mankind since they, they invented vegetarianism? He sounds like a vacuum cleaner salesman. I thought it was Sunday. I see you're not in the know. Yeah, man, I'm talking about man-eating cows here. Very few people know what I know, so I'm not surprised. We can't talk here, but if you'd like a pamphlet, <laughs> come to my room after curfew on Mondays or Wednesdays. He suddenly reaches in his pocket and draws out a ballpoint pen and what looks like a convenience store receipt. Kenji furiously scribbles on the scrap of paper and then thrusts it towards Rin. Here's the password. Memorize it and then eradicate any trace of this document. Eat it, burn it, dissolve in acid, whatever. I take the receipt from Kenji as Rin is unable to do so and glance at it. It's indeed a receipt, apparently for two rice balls and five boxes of matches. I hope he is not planning to burn anything down. On the other side is written just one word. Honey muffin. <laughs> I show it to Rin too, but she shows no reaction. Thank you. Yo, is Sal, you still in that club? The club of dark arts? Fine art. Anyway, yeah, I actually just had a meeting today. Still got your wits about you? No shady mind tricks going on? Nothing personal, man, but I have to be on top of things. Can't get caught with my pants down. Speaking of which, you really... You should really take showers a bit later. Gotta respect that personal space. Nothing personal. Kenji looks around as if he heard something and then strains his jacket. Okay, I gotta scoot now before it gets too late. Later, dudes. Good luck. Kenji takes off rapidly towards the main gate. Rin looks at after him, frowning. We watch after Ken Kenji's diminishing figure in silence. What's wrong with him? Technically speaking, I think he's legally blind. Oh, I see. Yeah, that. And there might be a couple of screws loose. But no worse, this was going in uh, uh, going on inside your parents' bedroom. If you know that reference, awesome. Uh, and here's the wanna cold letter. I can immediately tell from the envelope that it's not official matter matters of any sort. Someone actually wrote me an old fashioned handwritten letter paper letter. <sighs> Ow. Oh. Who bothers doing something like that in this day and age? Anyway, yeah, as unlikely as the prospect of receiving one sounds, there's definitely a letter lying on my desk. And I think we're going to stop it here at the Wanako letter. Um, it's going to say the same thing. Probably didn't record that long. I'm thinking about doing... Uh, um, about half hour-ish. I think I'm going to go record some Fable... Not Fable 2, Fallout 2. Or not. Maybe break. I don't know. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I will...